Club, remember that? They were a stadium rock band with a big reputation. And 30 years on, they're showing they're still a force. They're off to Brazil next week, have a UK arena tour lined up next month. They'll be joined by a pioneer of 80s new wave in the form of mid -year and Ultravox. What a combination. mid -year is with us alongside Jim Kerb. Morning both. Good morning. Good morning. What a great idea. Thank you very much. Whose was it? <laughs> it was ours, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was it. You know, these things tend to be put together by third parties. Yes. And Jim and I were uh, in a studio last year. Uh, Ultravox were rehearsing for a tour. Simple Minds were doing some, some new recording. And we were chatting over a bowl of soup about, uh, about these kind of 80s packages. And, uh, and we just thought, well, wouldn't it be great doing something together and, uh, and making a, a good quality ticket for a reasonable price? How very rock and roll is that? There you were. <coughs> Having a bowl of soup. Can't but tell you what was in the soup. <laughs> oh, come on, were you on the detail? Electric soup. Was it oxtail yeah. soup? Electric soup. <laughs> Chicken was it soup? lentil soup? <laughs> no, it was what in Peter, Gabriel, Peter Gabriel's studio and, um, you know, hanging out and talking and uh, we thought it would be a good idea and lo and behold. Are you mates? I mean, are you mates going back a long way? OK, well, are you mates? <laughs> no. How about well, that well, one? The, the strange thing is, although we're both from Glasgow, it wasn't yeah. until fairly recently, five or six years ago, where we actually had the chance to hook up. And, and um, so strangely enough, you know, it's taken all this, this time, but um, we're working at an event in Belgium at the time, one of these classical rock events and such, and um, we've been mates ever since. Yeah. OK, well, well look, nice. we're going to look at why it's going to work. Let's look, look back at these, some of the good old days. Here they are making their Top of the Pops debut, Simple Minds. <laughs> So we've gone through we've gone through quite a spectrum there. Yes. So that was right at the beginning, first appearance on top of the pops. Early days, yeah. Yeah, and then that was just a year ago, the last yeah, one. Yeah, that would have been yeah. Is it funny looking back when you see that sort of I mean, there's two thoughts, you know, when you look at pictures of yourself from school and stuff, that I'm sure you think, oh god, or whatever, but <laughs> there's another side and you think you get over it and you go, you know what? They were great days and and um and they're still great days, you know, the story goes on, that's how I feel about it. And coming back to the gigs that we're about to do, there's a whole generation that were with us then and still with us and coming back to, to um, indulge in it even mm. more. Mm. Um, you turned down what became one of your biggest hits, didn't you? Tell us about what happened. Oh, you're talking Several about, towns. Yeah, sometimes. you're talking about Don't You Forget About Me and The Breakfast Club. Um, it was amazing because they approached us to do the song for the movie. And uh, it was a demo of a song, we hadn't written it. Mm. And it sounded pretty good, but we were working on a lot of our own stuff at the time, like Alive and Kicking and such, and we thought, you know, what's the big deal? So, and we saw a rough cut of the movie as well. Didn't, it wasn't The Godfather or Citizen Kane. Uh, um, <laughs> so we kind of thought, nah. And uh, people always say, so what made you do it in the end? Was it pressure from the top? In fact, what it was, was that the songwriter, Keith Forsey, he got in touch after, you know, f sort of failed attempts and said, look, can I come over and hang out in Glasgow? And we thought, that's brave. And, and, <laughs> and um, we liked Keith more at the time more than we liked his song. And by that, after a couple of days, you know, when you like someone and... You did him a favour. Kind of. And boy, are we glad we did. Yeah. Yes, because I, I mean, because it's now it's in a, it's a film in a film now, isn't it? So that's still bringing. Yeah, in... it it just re regenerates. I mean, as you mentioned Brazil. We start there next week, but we go from Brazil to America and Canada and such. And um, although in other parts of the world we'd had a career previous to that song, it was that yeah. song that took us through the sort of door in those places. And, and Rich, are you so you're performing, doing your thing? Is there a young, is there a young version of you coming to see the show? Is that story true? 
Oh no, I, I know what, what you're talking about, is that uh, my songwriting partner Charlie Burchill and I, well I should say first of all, we're really delighted to be playing with Ultravox because <laughs> bands like Ultravox and Magazine, when I say they were, you know, they were two or three years before us, which back then is a kind of generation of bands. What are you trying to say here then? <laughs> not much. <laughs> uh, um, but two or we, three years of generation, that's not fair. Yeah, they were the sort of prototype for Simple Minds, and, and so um, we used to, there was a point in Glasgow where there was a year where the local venue was closed down for some reason, and we used to hitchhike round to see various bands, and Ultravox were one of them. So. Well, that's not, and it's kind of come full circle. Well, it has because it makes it makes perfect sense. You know, I mean, things are things are tough out there for people, and uh, and the idea of seeing two bands from the same era, the same genre, two two of the I don't know, dare I say more quality uh, bands, rock bands from the, the period, uh, playing together, it makes a really good, valuable, you know, evening out. So it seems to, it seems to have expanded what, what we do. So Jim, you hitchhiked to one of his gigs. I'm not doing it again. <laughs> I don't think you need <laughs> That was then. <laughs> but now you can at least get a car, can you? Um, Mitch, did you listen to his music? I did. I went to see them uh, when they opened up for a magazine. I think it was the London Palladium. Right. Uh, is that right? The London Palladium? I think that's right. Something like that. Yeah, way back in the day. Because there's such a buzz about this new band from Glasgow, so I was very jealous. And just to be clear for people, do on when you're on tour together, you don't play together. Are you playing together? We're not. Uh, no, we're on the, we're on the same stage. It's two two separate uh, entities uh, doing the doing the one evening. Um, we haven't we haven't crossed over yet. But then again, I'm, oh, come well, on. I was going to say I can't be the first person to think. <laughs> Oh, go on. You could just. Could you? <laughs> I think you're right. That's a yes, isn't it? I think you're right. Have we got a deal done it would, now? It would be a bit weird if, you know, if, if something didn't happen, I think. Mm. Um, the last thing we toured the arena is we had OMD on, and at the end of the night we did a song together, and, and um, it went down well. Say yes then. It sounds like a the distinct possibility now. <laughs> I love the way you two do deals. It's absolutely brilliant. We'll just bring the soup, Charlie. And then yeah, if we bought some it. soup, it would have been over. <laughs> <done deal>. Absolutely. <laughs> the soup or oh, so when, when are the tours? So it's arena tours you're doing. When's it start? Is it in the run-up to Christmas? It's, it's the end of the end of November. Right. Uh, we're starting. We're doing uh, Glasgow, Manchester, uh, Birmingham, and London. So four shows back to back, uh, but fabulous. And do they know at Christmas? Um, still makes money, doesn't it, for the live eight? It fun, does. Yeah. Right? Bob, Bob and I uh, give the royalties across to the Band Aid Trust. So uh, so that record. It's something we didn't see at the time that every Christmas, of course, it gets rolled out again. It's on the greatest hits and the greatest Christmas records ever. And every time it's played on the radio, it generates uh, generates income. That gig in Glasgow is going to be a bit special, isn't it? Yeah, it is indeed. Um, not only, obviously, it's both our hometown, but um, it's a brand new venue which opens next week called the Hydro. And um, we got a chance to look at the venue a couple of weeks ago, and we're mm. so. Uh, so proud of the job they've done, really. Um, for a long time, Scotland, never mind just Glasgow, has needed a venue like that, and I really, I think they've got it right. Okay, Rather liking so the Colombo so Mac you're wearing today, yeah, by the way. Yeah, yeah, Mac's always good, isn't it? For, <laughs> well, well, for well, a walk in the park. You never know when it's going to rain in here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're doing deals and everything, so which is the song that you're going to sing together? Ah, uh, well, there's <laughs> probably a lot of candidates. Probably a good idea would be to find a, a song that when we toured with OMD, both bands like Kraftwerk, and, okay. uh, so we found one there. But um, remember, there's more involved than just us two. I know. Oh, yeah, I was yeah. just so, wondering if we could yeah, get an answer. That was the rest all. will be sitting watching us going, hang on a minute. Be a huge uh, arm wrestling match. Oh, enjoy Lovely that. to see you both here today. <laughs> Thank you Thank so you much. Very Lovely to see you. Uh, Simple Minds and Ultravox start their arena tour. You've heard it at Glasgow on the 27th of November. Have fun.